On this week's episode of In an Instant, we are talking about an extremely modern instant camera that uses a retro design language. This is the Instax Mini Evo, a hybrid digital analog camera that is a true move for Fuji, and there's a lot to discuss. So, let's get into it. The kind of photography that would become part of the human being. Press a button and have the picture. Welcome to In An Instant, my name is Ben, and today we're discussing an unusually techy camera that utilizes Instax Minifilm, the most popular film of any format on the market today. This camera is super unusual in its combination of modern elements, like a screen, autofocus, and in-camera features, while printing onto the slightly more old school Instax film. Now, if you're new to this channel, we're all about analog here. I talk about cameras, history, the craft of photography, using these incredible, classic tools. So this episode is a little bit unusual because this, folks, is a digital camera. Allow me to explain. With something like Fuji's Instax Mini 40, which looks similar but is far more stripped down with no screen or onboard features, when you take a picture, light enters through the lens and is projected directly onto the film inside, which then ejects and the chemistry inside the film brings the image to life. With the Instax Mini Evo, you're taking a digital picture onto a small sensor inside. It stores the picture in its internal memory or an SD card. It displays it on a screen along with some other images you've taken. And then you can decide to print those images onto film. So it's essentially a digital camera with a film printer, all in one incredibly and impressively small and light package. What's so bizarre about the Instax Evo is that despite being a new digital camera shooting instant film with a screen, it still kind of feels like a throwback, but like a more recent kind of throwback. It's reminiscent of digital cameras from like 2004 or like using an old phone camera. And I mean this in the best way possible. There's of course a tremendous wave of nostalgia that roots a lot of people's interest in instant film. And it's nostalgia from another time. It's the 90s, the 80s, the 70s, whenever. But this camera is, perhaps unintentionally giving me early 2000s nostalgia, and I actually kind of like it. It's, it's like using a lo-fi digital camera I would have had as a kid, and the photos look like they belong on MySpace. And again, I mean this in the best way possible. <laughs> the effects offered in the camera, of which there are 10 built-in color effects and 10 built-in lens effects, are implemented via a really cool blend of tactile hardware, and they're all over-cranked, like something you'd post with the caption, I'm very in my feelings today, on the first day you ever logged into Instagram. And those posts are still on your account. You better archive them before we find them, but we'll find them. And we'll share them to our stories. And you're, you're, you're gonna be finished. Okay, so anyway, this camera is insane. As someone so obsessed with analog things, I'm typically predisposed to shoe aside hybrid products like this. But the moment I started using the Evo, I started really rocking with it. and was very surprised with how much heat I was feeling from these pics. To show you a little bit more of this camera in action, we took it out to the zoo of all places in Brooklyn with the Sweet Boys University squad. All right, we are out here with the Instax Mini Evo. Where else at the Prospect Park Zoo? I am joined today by my guy right here, Sunny D, at Wavelengths behind the camera. And all throughout this day, you'll be seeing Matt Lucier. Looks like you're twerking. There's a lot of things to experiment with with this camera and a lot of interesting mechanisms inside it. Uh, there's a lot of weird color effects. There's a lot of interesting lensing options. And we're just gonna mess with it today. We thought we'd get some animals involved. I'm done with human models. I'm done with them. Humans, I'm just done with in general. Animals, way more interesting. If I get a picture of a baboon today, I'm gonna like absolutely lose my mind. So we'll see what happens. Oh my God, bamboos. Oh my God. I swear, that was completely unplanned. Oh my God, look at their butts. So we've discovered that macro mode, which is something you can put on with any of the effects in this camera, combined with the soft focus lens filter is an insane combination. It gives you this like almost portrait mode-y kind of look. Um, and you know, we're all about melting pixels with this camera. Like Absolutely. we got a digital camera, but we're trying to see what are the kinds of modes we can use that actually kind of bring some of that analog life back into it. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's interesting because I feel like there's times when we take stuff that I'm like, even just an extra little bit of juice, once this is printed onto the Instax, yes. like, it will like, I think these ones especially, because you'll get the blacks will be super. Yeah. It's gonna be, it's very dramatic looking. We love it. Let's, let's take another one. <laughs> the sheep says, ah. The goat says, ma, ma. And this one's gonna say, cheese. 
there's yeah. definitely a joy in you know being able to just do this without having to worry about whether you know ex developing time takes away from taking the photo uh it's really cool i think like i think to that same regard though it's like i think for someone who's like getting into like shooting more analog stuff like this is a nice middle ground between the, both of them and that like you can don't have to like completely change your whole style of shooting yeah. to be able to do what you want to do like you can learn how to like expose things properly and then be able to print them and be like okay now i get it and then you can kind of advance right. into other sectors of, of totally yeah you can make mistakes now yeah. with this camera and if this gets you into other analog mediums cool if it doesn't it's an amazing tool on its own yeah absolutely yeah and uh i feel like the quality of the digital photos just screams to high school sunny if i was given this camera back in you know the mid 2000s i would be like i am a photographer this is art like that's the sort of aesthetic that i get from the photos that i've taken so far today i'm on red panda watch if i see a red panda i'm gonna go goofy today you're gonna see me absolutely go dummy hey otters so one of the best design elements of this camera overall in its, in its conception was that they decided to integrate things like the lens filtering and the color filters into dials. So you literally have to rotate a dial on the top to change the color effect you want in your photo, whether you want that to be monochrome, sepia, yellow, red, blue, etc., Or if you want to do something like fisheye or mirror or blur or soft focus, you can rotate this dial. It's a really cool system. It's a really good idea because you're, you're taking this digital camera and this digital concept, but you're still making it feel kind of analog by doing that. And then of course you've got maybe the most satisfying aspect of this camera, which is that it has a print lever. So if we really like this photo, crank the print lever. And then the camera does kind of a hilarious animation, uh, not synced well, <laughs> like it's not quite seamless, but and then there it comes. And there you have it. So it's, it's not a particularly fast printing process. On a normal Instax mini camera, you snap the photo and it just comes right out. This takes a minute. It acts more like a printer. But, you know, that's, that's what this camera's for. And if you want to print your photos, cool. If not, you don't have to, and you get the freaking swans squacking at you, so it's all good. Dab at the zoo. Thank you. Okay, this guy, this guy's asking for his portrait. Sir, do you shoot on portrait? I think there's more birds up here. <gasps> oh my God. Oh my God. We've got a red panda. Oh my God. Look at him. He's a, he is at maximum floof. So as, a, as a, a bit of backstory to this, I've been to, you know, probably 10 zoos, DC, Smithsonian, San Diego Zoo, uh, Bronx Zoo, all over the freaking place I've been to zoos. Every time I go, the red panda exhibit is closed, all the red pandas are on vacation, all the red pandas are back to China. I don't know why. And this is the first time I've ever been able to see a red panda with my own two eyes. And I'm absolutely losing my entire butt. I'm trying to censor myself because otherwise I'd be cursing my butt off. You know what we can do? And this is where everyone's gonna smash unsubscribe. We can take a photo with my phone, send, I'm gonna zoom in with my phone and then send it to the camera and then I can print it from the camera. Look at that. Now this will become an Instax photo. Let's just do it right here. Let's see if this works quickly. So all I need to do is open the Instax Evo app, select the image from my library of photos and then hit print and then it sends directly to the camera. And suddenly my iPhone camera is also an instant camera. How does that make any dang sense? Look at that, it's pretty weird, it's pretty funky. If you're an analog guy like me, this has gotta be one of the weirdest sights, speaking as someone who's currently experiencing it. All right, boys, I just think we kind of rocked it at the zoo. Absolutely. We, you know, we, we realized while we were shooting, we were taking photos of like cute animals and it was like- Humans overrated. Yeah, humans absolutely overrated now that we've been able to shoot some goats. My God, look this way. <laughs> Holy crap, this is insane. So we had an absolute blast using the creative modes on the Evo to shoot all manner of species. Um, and this camera just proved to be an absolute asset in a situation where you kind of have to spray and pray a little bit. Uh, we we're shooting something like a peacock that's just running around and you need to take a bunch of photos and you maybe don't want to print all of them. Also, shout out to Bill Sheepskin. Uh, I call him Billy Boy. Bill Sheepskin, William Sheepskin, who did an amazing video at a zoo, which we also realized while we were filming this, but like, oh, William's photos were incredible with his RZ at the, the zoo in 
what, South Africa? I don't know what zoo it was. Yeah. <laughs> well, without further ado, let's get back into the studio to talk some more about the Evo. All right, back to the studio and fully defrosted. Let's crack further into the Evo. Aside from its 10 lens effects and 10 film effects, which are operated by these handy dials, it also has some shocking deeper features like face detection, an autofocus illuminator for more accurate AF, white balance control, which we use to accomplish some funkier effects, uh, full flash control that the camera remembers when you turn it off, which is huge, and even print quality and brightness, which is wild. You could date stamp your photos and the camera stores metadata from each shot so you can see which filters were used. The lens on this camera is very interesting because we're typically used to their 60 millimeter F12 lenses, which are the same across the board for all Instax mini film cameras, not the hybrid cameras, but the normal Instax mini cameras. And when you look at the lens here and you see 28 millimeter F2.0, you might be thinking, what the sweet frick, how is that even possible? F2 on a normal Instax mini camera would make your depth of field very thin. Almost nothing would be in focus. And the camera would be way heavier to accommodate that lens. But remember, since the Instax Mini Evo is a digital camera, it's recording onto a very tiny sensor. One fifth of an inch, in fact. Think of it more like your small phone camera. And with a sensor that tiny, depth of field is actually huge. It's challenging to get blurred backgrounds. That's why Apple created portrait mode. It was to simulate that effect. So Instax Evo photos do look different than pictures with traditional Instax Mini cameras as they're capturing light and printing the photos in a completely different way. Speaking of the printing element, there are a surprising amount of ways to use that functionality of the camera. This device is a two-way street. You can take photos with it and print them right away, or you can take photos on a different camera entirely and then use the Bluetooth feature to send them to this camera. <laughs> When we were messing with this camera right after Christmas with my parents, we were snapping around doing some art house culturally redefining portraiture. And then my mom was like, can you print this photo of us? It was a photo we'd taken with her iPhone. I was like, sure, why not? That's, <laughs> that's awesome that I can even do that. Uh, this is such a fun party camera to have with family because people just like having physical photos. It doesn't even matter how they were captured for most folks. And the calling card of the Evo is that it makes getting cool shots easy, fun, and communal. Uh, you can kind of crowd around the camera and everyone can mess with it since the screen and the features are so accessible. Everyone who has used this camera with me has been like, this thing actually rips. I kind of rock with the Evo. Fuji has successfully divided their product lines into two specific aesthetics. On one hand, you've got the cute, adorable doinker Bulbasaurs, and on the other hand, you've got the vintage Lomo-esque designs, both of which are servicing this huge and growing market. With the Evo taking on this gorgeous classical design, I love how the features are paired with physical levers and dials. But the screen's functionality does kind of remind me of those 2004 digital cameras in like not the best way. It's a bit of an awkward system to use and it has taken practice to operate quickly. Uh, I'm so loving all the options provided, but I just wish the thing flowed more smoothly from like a UX perspective. All right, why don't we flow into pros and cons? Pros, high tech, and I say that in air quotes because this obviously isn't some mega crazy high tech gadget, but in the film world, this is about as advanced as it gets, and this product is surprisingly endearing despite its techiness. Design, I think Fuji put a lot of smart ideas into the aforementioned tactility. Yes, these are digital features, but having to use dials and cranks to operate them is extremely smart and fun. And cons, it's digital, I know, that that's the opposite of what I just used as a pro. But that would be a con for a lot of people who wanna shoot film with a film camera. This is printing film with a digital camera and that's just not everyone's cup of joe. And menus, I found it pretty clunky to operate the menu system. The camera kind of implies you'll hold it horizontally but then menus mostly work vertically. And I love that there are buttons for all of it but it never feels quick to just thumb through the menus. Alrighty, the Instax Evo retails for $200 a USD which is quite expensive for an instant camera but again, this ain't your daddy's Polaroid. Daddy like. Thank you for watching in an instant. Go dummy on that subscribe button. You can contribute to the channel at patreon.com slash in an instant channel. Stay tuned for more reviews, breakdowns, shoots, and all things instant. Bye.